Hello everyone, I'm Jose with Triangle Systems and in this video I'm going to show you how to enable the wireless access point in your Altum AC point-to-point -point link. Now, as some of you may already know, the Altum AC unit is a very flexible system. It can be used as a point-to-point -point link, point-to-multi-point -point system as well. Each Altum AC unit has a built-in Wi-Fi radio. This allows us to set up the radio as a wireless access point with the built-in hotspot feature. So in every radio it's included. Now, the Altum AC has multiple applications. It can be used for campus environments, municipality Wi-Fi, open area Wi-Fi, event Wi-Fi, and one thing that's really good is for surveillance applications. We're gonna get into a little more into that later. And those are good applications as well. In this video, I'm gonna guide you how to set up the entire configuration of the system from your router to the point of point how to add the Wi-Fi camera to the wireless access point. So, let's jump into the configurations. Okay, everyone. So we have now our point-to-point -point system. In this scenario, we're going to imagine we have a main building where a router is connected by now. Then, our AP is going to be on top of our roof, pointing to the far side warehouse. The warehouse can be either from 5 to 10 miles away. And as long as we have a clear line of sight, we should be able to get a good link. We have here as well an IP camera. This is going to be on the warehouse at the far end. Now let's take a look at a router. In every router, there's going to be a DHCP server. The DHCP server is going to tell us from which range of IPs any user that logs into the network is going to get assigned specific IP. This is important because the wireless access point on the far side of the link is going to give IPs based on the router information. Let's take a look at the router. When I log into my router, I'm going to look for advanced settings and the local settings as well. Now keep in mind, every router is different depending on the manufacturer. Now first here I can see that my router's IP is 192.168.1.1. So nobody in the network can have that IP. That is the brain of the network. Now, a DHCP server, it says here is from that 100 IP to that 254. That means that anybody that connects to the wireless access point on the far end of the link is going to get an IP in that range. Now, knowing that range, we're going to assign IP addresses, static IP addresses to all our devices. I already has previously assigned the IP. I assigned dot two and dot three to the far side station. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect from the POE of the access point, my LAN cable to my router. This is how you and your main building would connect your access point to your router. Now you can see here, only my access point is connecting to my main building router. The front side access point is only connected to the power supply and has no LAN interface. Okay, so now I'm going to log into my AP side. I previously assigned the static IP to each radio. Remember, that two for the AP, that three for the station. So let's take a look at our IP side. Okay, so from our AP side, we can see we have one associated station. So this is a point of point link. It should only be one station associated to this link. You can see it here clearly. Get transmission quality. Look at the network, interfaces, and we can take a look at our LAN properties as well. So here's where I assign the static IP. Depending on your network, this subnet range is going to change based on your specific network. So now we're going to log into the station side. Remember, we said we assigned previously the IP static IP.3. Right now we're communicating with the far side radio going over the point to point link logging into the station side. Now on the station side, we're going to take a look at the Wi-Fi settings. So we're going to go to network, Wi-Fi. In the Wi-Fi section we have two radios. The 5 gigahertz radio which is a backhole radio going back to our main building. And we have the 2.4 Wi-Fi radio. This right now is disabled. 
James that today. Now, in this section, we have wireless network is disabled. We're going to keep it disabled until we change all the settings we want. First thing we're going to go to the settings. Country code must be US 1.0.2, it's the default setting. Wireless profile is going to be G plus N. Channel spectrum, channel width is going to be 40 MHz channel, the biggest one. The channel, we can keep it on for now. Max transfer power as well. Interface configuration. The mode has to be access point. SSID. This is how the end user is going to recognize the Wi-Fi access point. Now, we're going to put right now for this video uh, something we can recognize easily. Triangle underscore video test. We do save and apply. Now, if the user wants to, he can enable encryption on the wireless access point. We go to wireless security, encryption method. For this, we're going to use web share key, just for this video. Save and apply. Remember, all the changes we've done, we have not enabled the actual Wi-Fi access point yet. So now that we have all our features the way we want them to, we're going to come here, wireless network is disabled. On the right side, right hand side is enable. So click on this. Now we have it enabled. So we'll save and apply. So now we have actually enabled the wireless access point on our far side station. So now I'm going to connect my Wi-Fi camera to my router. This is going to allow me to configure my camera to connect to the same SSID as my station side. So we can go ahead and plug it into our router. Previously, I, ass I assigned a static IP to this camera. I assigned the 192.168.1.20 IP address. The reason why is because I'm using a static IP that is not in the DHCP server range because I don't want to have an IP conflict. So let's look into the camera. Personal administration, configuration. Each camera, depending on the manufacturer, is going to be a different setup. So the wireless. In the wireless, we're going to do a site survey. It's going to show us all the available SSIDs in the area. And we can see here the triangle video test is one of the strongest ones. So that's our station side wireless access point. We're going to connect to that one. We're going to enable the web encryption. We're going to put in our password here. We're going to save. Now, for it to connect, we need to disconnect the camera from the router. This way, it can associate via the wireless communication. We're going to go ahead and disconnect it. So we're going to lose the camera for a minute. Now we're going to log into our station site. Now this will take a couple of minutes for the camera to associate via wirelessly to our station site. There we go. So the camera already associated to our station side. In our, in our station side, on our AP side, we can actually now see that the camera is associated to a wireless access point. We can see here one association is of your camera connected. So now that we disconnected the camera from our router, it's going to associate via the wireless access point with our station side. Let's take a look at our station. So now our camera is associated via wirelessly. How do we know that? In our station side, when we log into it, on the wireless settings, there's a section called Associated Stations. That's the number of users in the wireless access point. 
At this point in time, it's only the camera. Now, let's look into the camera over the air. There we go. So I can reach my camera over the air. Now the path I'm taking is the following. It's my laptop connected to the router. The router is connected to the AP side. The AP goes over the air, all the way to the station side. And on the station side, there's a camera connected via the Wi-Fi. This can be from five to 10 miles away. I can still have a connection to the internet. Now, for some more applications, this is going over the web interface. We're going to log into an actual BMS system. At the camera. And we're going to see this image. So now we have a live video feed over the air. This is in the video how to set up a real live point on point system with a security application in mind. If you like the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media as well. See you on the next one.